Thank you to eBay for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description below to go right to all the Power Rangers collectibles you've been looking for. Translating and importing a successful Japanese media property was nothing new to the U.S. in 1993. Voltron, Robotech, Battle of the Planets, Star Blazers, heck, even Godzilla all started in Japan. But a live-action superhero TV series about a team of teenagers with attitude recruited to fight against the forces of evil with super weapons, highly choreographed martial arts, and giant transforming robots was, and their fight to save their world would change ours forever, creating a pop culture franchise that has lasted over 25 years. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the History of Power Rangers. The Power Rangers franchise began in 1993 with the series titled Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. It introduced the concept of five teenagers recruited to join a team of primary color costumed superheroes tasked with protecting the world from evil. The teens are supplied with everything they need in their fight against Space Witch Rita Repulsa by Zordon, a giant benevolent space head floating in a tube of light. Zordon and his partner Alpha 5 provide them with these suits that enhance their physical abilities, a base, super weapons like guns, swords, and axes, and giant transforming robots called Zords that can combine to form an ultimate weapon called a Megazord. Over three seasons from 1993 through 1995, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers established the template for the tone, visuals, and overall plot progression. With each successive season, the composition of the team cycles through new cast members, new themes, new zords, and new threats to Earth, a refresh pattern that continues today. Power Rangers was created by Haim Saban and Shuki Levy through their television and music production company, Saban Productions. Saban Productions, founded in 1980, would grow and evolve into Saban Entertainment in 1988. During that time, Saban happened to be in Japan where he happened to see a show called Bioman. Cho Denshi Bioman, or in English, Super Electron Bioman, was a show about a team of primary color costume superheroes protecting the world from evil with special suits that enhance their physical abilities, super weapons like guns and swords, and giant transforming vehicles that can combine to form an ultimate weapon called Bio-Robo. It aired in Japan from February of 1984 to January of 1985. At the time, it was the eighth installment of the Super Sentai series, which had begun in 1975 with Himitsu Sentai Go Ranger, or in English, Secret Squadron Go Ranger. Saban could see the potential for adapting Bioman into English and bringing it to the United States. In 1985, he cut together a pilot for a Bioman episode and shopped it around the networks, who each took turns saying no. Saban wasn't the first to recognize the potential and tried to import Super Sentai to the U.S. A few years earlier, Stan Lee and Marvel attempted the same thing with the fifth Super Sentai team, Taiyo Sentai Sun Vulcan. What a, uh, what a different world I would... We would be living in if only. Imagine Power Rangers kicking off 10 years earlier with my favorite Sentai team produced by Marvel. Today, maybe even part of the MCU. After having completed a successful three-year character exchange partnership with Toei that saw Shogun Warriors comics from Marvel in the U.S. and a Japanese Spider-Man television show in Japan, Stan was enamored with the action and presentation of the Japanese superhero shows and thought it could work in Hollywood. The networks disagreed. For more on that, check out our video all about Japanese Spider-Man and his influence on the Super Sentai and Power Rangers genre. There are several benefits to importing pre-existing content. Number one, it already exists. You save a lot of time and money when you don't have to conceive, develop, and produce the whole thing from scratch. An episode of Power Rangers is nearly 30% complete before anyone at Saban has done anything. When Toei is done with costumes and props for a given season of Super Sentai, send all that stuff with the completed episode footage over to Saban to be redubbed with the English-speaking actors who will shoot any additional fill-in segments to develop a plot unique to the U.S. audience. Most of the fight scenes and just about anything in costume is already done, including visual effects. Names and locations can be changed, shots can be reused if necessary or eliminated, chronology can be shifted, characters from one season can be moved to another. New characters can be created that were never there to begin with. Heck, 153 episodes of Kyoryu Sentai Zyu Ranger, Gosei Sentai Dai Ranger, and Ninja Sentai Kaku Ranger became 145 episodes of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and 10 episodes of Mighty Morphin Alien Rangers. Whatever it was originally in terms of narrative only matters to the extent that it needs to be clearly communicated to the new audience and the proprietary branded characters. Ultimately, the only thing that really matters is eyeballs on screens and toys on the shelves because that is where the money is made. 
Power Rangers is the name of the brand. The first three seasons are called Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, but everything after that, every new season, every refresh gets its own title. Power Rangers Turbo, Power Rangers in Space, Power Rangers Time Force, Power Rangers SPD, Power Rangers Megaforce. Each season adapts a season that has already run in Japan anywhere from one year earlier to as much as seven years ago. Toei discovered very early in the process that Super Sentai programs were a great vehicle, pun intended, for selling all kinds of toys and action figures. Robots and comics and clothes and video games and anything else you can slap a logo on. It was that kind of merchandising power that Saban was hoping to take advantage of, and did. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers found its home on Fox Kids, a block of children's television programming Monday through Friday from 2 to 5 p.m. That's the magic hour for weekday kids programming, and Fox Kids was already a kids' TV juggernaut. Batman the Animated Series was the anchor beginning in September of 1992, but other heavy hitters cycled through. Tiny Toon Adventures, X-Men the Animated Series, Eek the Cat, Super Dave, Daredevil for Hire, and reruns of Alvin and the Chipmunks, Muppet Babies, and Beetlejuice. It was the convergence of some of the biggest pop culture brands of the decade. The interest in superhero shows was already cultivated with Batman and X-Men. Saban's Power Rangers found exactly the right outlet to reach exactly the right audience. In 1994, Batman, the X-Men, and Power Rangers would all be joined by Spider-Man, The Tick, and Animaniacs, a lineup that no other network could compete with, and every one of them driving kids directly to the toy aisle to continue the adventures at home. Not only did these Super Sentai shows already exist for Saban to repurpose, but supporting merchandise did as well. Action figures, transformable zords, roleplay items. Saban partnered with Bandai America to make sure that anything and everything a child of the 90s could want related to Power Rangers would be available, or at least they would try. Power Rangers was so popular at launch that there were difficulties maintaining stock levels. It was one of the hot holiday toys of 1993 and 1994. <laughs> The Power Rangers have grown into a billion-dollar business with a vast array of licensed products from over 250 licensees worldwide. The cycle of product refresh season after season was a godsend for toy retailers at the time and long into the future for online marketplaces like eBay. Transforming action, Power Rangers. This is Zordon. It's transforming time. Evil space aliens are approaching your location. Combine your weapons. It's your only hope. I'm a guys! action, Power Rangers. Use your hand-to-hand -hand fighting abilities. Protect the Earth from evil space aliens. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers from Bandai. Grab the power. Power Rangers have been featured in comics since 1994 at companies like Hamilton, Marvel, Image, and Disney, most recently in multiple series by Boom Studios, which introduced an alternate dystopian potential future where Lord Dracon has defeated not only Rita Repulsa, but all of the Rangers, and now, now, he's come to Earth to do the same. Power Rangers video games were produced for nearly every console and handheld system since the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo. Today you can play Power Rangers Battle for the Grid on your favorite system, whether it's Xbox, PlayStation, or Nintendo Switch, which also features Lord Dracon. Power Rangers was a multimedia and pop culture phenomenon right out of the gate, and that strength grew over successive seasons. Saban Entertainment continued to develop the Power Rangers brand from 1993 to 2001, when the all-seeing eye of the Walt Disney Company took notice. Seeking a boy's compliment to their explosive Disney Princesses brand, which did $300 million in its first year of existence, Disney bought out Fox Family Worldwide, which included Saban Entertainment and the Power Rangers franchise. The Power Rangers were going to be the Disney Ninja Princes, if you will. But Disney's relationship with Power Rangers wasn't as natural a fit as their own characters developed internally over the course of nearly 70 years. Several affiliates, regardless of Disney's ownership of the networks, would not air Power Rangers shows due to conflicts with FCC regulations, specifically a lack of any educational or informational content as required by the Children's Television Act of 1990. But critics point to the violence, and they say this is a bad message for children no matter how the producers try to package it. If you're in the right, it's okay to use weapons, it's okay to use force, it's okay to hurt, to maim, to kill. 
And that's a pretty sad message to be giving children. By 2009, Disney was ready to move on and announced that instead of developing the creation of a new season based on the 2009 Super Sentai show, Samurai Sentai Shin Kenjer, they would just rebroadcast the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers in 2010 and wash their hands of the whole thing. Besides, they had just found their new boys line sweethearts with the acquisition of Marvel Entertainment thanks in no small part to the billions of dollars in accumulated Disney princesses revenue. After Disney bought the Power Rangers, Saban Entertainment reinvented itself as BVS Entertainment in 2002. In 2010, when Disney was ready to unload the franchise, Saban was there with $43 million to reacquire everything Disney had purchased during the Fox Family buyout. Saban got right back to business with the production of a new series called Power Rangers Samurai based on the 2009 Super Sentai series Samurai Sentai Shinkenger. The first episode aired in February of 2011, and Saban announced the production of a new Power Rangers movie which was ultimately never actually released or completed. The first Power Ranger feature film, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers The Movie, was released in June of 1995, featuring the cast of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers from season two and three. It helped tell the story of the transition from Zords and themes based on Zoo Ranger and Die Ranger in seasons one and two, to Zords and themes based on Kaku Ranger, where the television production would begin to pull new fight footage from for season three. While feature films have long been a part of these Super Sentai seasons, this was a uniquely Power Rangers creation. It contained no recycled footage from the Japanese productions. With a $15 million budget, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie grossed $13.1 million in its first weekend. And despite Roger Ebert's half-star review stating that it was, quote, as close as you can get to nothing and still have a product to project on the screen, end quote, it did $66 million worldwide, making it a huge financial success. It was followed by Turbo, a Power Rangers movie, two years later in 1997. Setting up the new car-based season, Power Rangers Turbo, it was a box office, I don't want to say disappointment, but at this point the gloss from the original team had worn off a bit, the refresh formula was beginning to set in, and the original audience had mostly moved on. That said, Turbo, a Power Rangers movie, did just over $8 million total, and that is disappointing. Disappointing enough to refocus all efforts on television only for a very long time. Power Rangers wouldn't return to theaters in any form until 20 years later in 2017 in an attempt to go back to the beginning and reboot the whole thing amidst a world of thriving superhero franchises. With a budget of $100 million, the film simply titled Power Rangers earned a total of $142 million worldwide. Reviews were mixed, but a sequel was still heavily hinted at as Saban and the rest of the production had plans for up to six or seven films. I mean, why stop there? Give me a call. We can get this thing up to 24, 25 easy. In 2013, Power Rangers celebrated its 20th anniversary with Power Rangers Megaforce, an adaptation of the 2010 Super Sentai series Tensu Sentai Go Seizure. Power Rangers Megaforce operated the same way the previous two seasons operated, by breaking up the 45-episode season into two halves. 23 episodes of Power Rangers Samurai was broadcast from February to December of 2011. 22 episodes of Power Rangers Super Samurai was broadcast from February of 2012 to December of 2012. Power Rangers Super Megaforce, based on 2011's Kaizoku Sentai Go Kaiger, brought back Power Rangers from the previous 20 seasons of the show in a celebration of the long and colorful history of the Power Rangers franchise. 2015 through 2018 broke up two different Super Sentai programs into four Power Rangers seasons. With the success of the Power Rangers movie in 2017, it seemed like a new era of Power Rangers was beginning to emerge. And it was. Just not like that. In February of 2018, Saban abruptly announced that their 25-year business partnership with Bandai America had concluded, sparking immediate speculation about the future of all parties involved. Was Saban in trouble? Was Bandai America in trouble? Was Power Rangers in trouble? Immediately after that announcement, Saban also announced that Hasbro was the new global master toy licensor for Power Rangers. Hasbro was adding to its slate of globally popular toy licenses that already included Marvel, Star Wars, Transformers, G.I. Joe, My Little Pony, among others. The final shoe would drop as Saban and Hasbro announced that Hasbro was not only the master toy licensor, but that they were buying Power Rangers altogether. All of it. All the Rangers, the shows, the toys, the names, the Zords, everything for just $522 million. 
Power Rangers Beast Morphers, Hasbro's first season of Power Rangers based on 2012's Tokume Sentai Go Busters, debuted in March of 2019. It was produced by AllSpark, Hasbro's entertainment division. Utilizing the same formula as every season before, Beast Morphers inherits the theme, costumes, props from its Japanese counterpart, but creates a completely original story with a new cast. And there's a new company making the toys. Power Rangers was a pop culture phenomenon from day one. Over its quarter of a century in existence, it has become one of the most profitable, most beloved multi-generational franchises in history, as evidenced by Power Morphicon, the biennial fan convention focused on everything Power Rangers. Power Rangers has developed the kind of stability that allows it to maintain its popularity through the ups and downs of trends or the audience growing up and moving on to other things. It is such a part of our shared pop culture that Hasbro and Saban have established August 28th National Power Rangers Day in observance of the day that Mighty Morphin Power Rangers first aired in 1993. And you can rewatch it all right now on your favorite streaming service, something truly incredible considering how many episodes exist and how many different companies have produced and owned them. eBay has all the collectibles you just can't get anywhere else. Vintage, rare, import, new, and old, the kind of stuff we showed off in this video. Take a look through the rest of the toys. You'll find things you used to own, things you forgot about, or possibly things you didn't even know existed. I thought my Ace McCloud was complete and had been since I originally purchased it back in 1986, but to my surprise, I was missing several accessories. Look, Ace went to the beach, to school, to grandma's house. How are we gonna shoot an episode about Kenner's Centurions without all the missiles and jet engines and wrist-mounted laser guns? I knew there was only one place to go. I knew eBay would have it. eBay is the place for collectibles, new, old, rare, vintage, one-of-a-kind, domestic, and international. All kinds of toys, action figures, accessories, play sets. Go to eBay today to find the thing you've been missing all these years. To get started today, click the link in the description below. Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe. If you're not already a subscriber, thank you very much to those of you who already are. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy. Please share this video and let us know in the comments down below. Oh shoot, I forgot to mention that time the Power Rangers and the Ninja Turtles met back in 1998 during Power Rangers in Space. That's like the moment of the 90s. Well, it's all happening again later this year in the comments, so if you missed it then, second chances do come true. <laughs> Cut.